On October 14th of this year, officers were alerted to a body found in the woods behind 5 Vanguard Parkway. For those not familiar, Vanguard Parkway is off of W Street, which is in the area of Emerson and Lee Road. There's the recycling facility. It, it was right behind there. It was apparent the body had been there for an unknown period of time as it was in a state of decomposition in which a scientific identification was required. After examination by the Monroe County Medical Examiner's Office, the body was identified as that of 16-year-old Jakara Lopez Moore. It was also determined the manner of death for Jakara was in fact a homicide. Jakara was reported missing to us by her family on the 29th of August of this year. At that time, it was reported to us that she'd left her residence on Weld Street at about 1.45 a.m. on the 27th and had never returned. We've been working on the circumstances surrounding Jakara Lopez's disappearance since it was first reported to the police department in August. The investigation is continuing and we'll release more information as the investigation permits. The difficult thing in, that we have to juggle here today is that this is a active, a very active murder investigation. As a result, there's only limited information that I can provide to you. And the juggling act is the fact that, you know, we need help from the public in, a, in, in all cases, and especially a case of this nature, but there's also information that we have to hold tight to the vest to, you know, protect the integrity of the investigation. So I will try to answer uh, a few questions on this. I'm sure that there is a bunch, um, and, and we'll try to, to balance out what we can release and what we need to hold tight to the vest on that. So I'm not going to, what I can tell you on that, I'm not going to confirm that she was seen leaving in a car or on foot. What I can tell you is that she did leave her house on the 27th at 145 under her own free will. Um, there has been some evidence, you know, that we have collected up, up to the point that we're at today. But I'm, I'm not going to confirm if she was in a car or she was on foot, and I'm not going to tell you exactly what we have recovered as of right now. Yes, so as far as the manner of death, I'm not going to disclose that because right now there's a very limited number of people who know how she died. So, you know, when we pick up a suspect, he's going to know that, and, and that's something that we need to hold tight. Everybody's worried about false confessions, and that's one of the ways that we can ensure that we don't get a false confession, if you will. Uh, as far as how she was found, there was um, individuals that were going fishing in the area of the canal and they happened upon the body and they contacted us and it was a wooded area it, it's i actually wasn't very familiar with the area down there it, it borders along the canal and like i said there's a recycling center there and a couple other industrial locations uh, there's an old set of railroad tracks and it was in that wooded area back there quite frankly we're, we're rather lucky that we found her when we did She had been there for quite some time. I, I'm not going to pin it down at this point, but you know, at, at least over a month. At least over a month. Did you know if she died uh, within the day that she disappeared? Or? Again, that's one of the things I'm not going to disclose at this point in time, and, and I, I apologize. We do have a good idea of when, um, but that's not something that we're going to be able to talk about. Clearly, this is a very sensitive investigation. Yes. Yes, they do. And, and anybody that knew Jakara and has any information at all needs to call us. Anybody that, that knows what happened to her, please reach out to us. There may be a point in time where there's ad additional information that we can release, such as photographs or videos. But we're not at that point in the investigation right now. Um, you know, but if it's the goal of, of my team is to find the person that did this and make sure that they're held accountable for that. So everything that we do between now and the time that we make an arrest, we have to be very careful. Um, 
So if it's appropriate, then we're going to release more information, which may include photos, videos, stuff like that. But right now, anybody that has any information, somebody knows something, right? Somebody knows something. And that person has to find it inside themselves to call us. Put everything else aside, call us, and give us the information that we need. Mm -hmm. which, um, so Clinton and Andrews. Clinton and Andrews. So um, is that sort of where your focus is? We have several locations that we're looking at. And we have, we, we've been working this case since the beginning. We, we really have. And there's several locations throughout the city that we are actively looking at. There's several locations throughout the city that we've been looking at you know, since this occurred at the end of, of August. Um, you know, specific addresses, not going there right now. Don't know. You know, at this point, we don't know how many people are involved in this. We what don't. did you think that she was in danger? Like, early on, there was a, uh, I think a press release mm -hmm. that she was here. She was sort of in danger. We have... Right now in the city of Rochester, we have over 60, I think the exact number is 63 missing juveniles. It's extremely difficult to separate the runaway kids and to the true missing children who were abducted. Thank God in this community, at least right where we are, I know we just had a horrific case not far from here, but thank God in this community, you know, random abductions are extremely rare, okay? So there was just things in this case, although, and I know her mom has spoken to the media and, and provided some information on her. You know, although Jakara was going through things that, that young kids go through, it was uncommon for her to stay out of contact for a two-day period with her family. It was uncommon for her to be off of social media for that length of time. So, you know, after two days where they did not have any contact with her, then you know, the alarm bells went up and, and, and they called us. Now, there was uh, some ransom threats that were made or text messages that were sent early on in this investigation, but, you know, with the assistance of the FBI and, and other areas of the country, we were able to, to debunk those. That was just, you know, idiots out there seeing that this girl was missing and trying to take advantage of the situation, and there was actually no truth to those ransom rumors that, that came about. So, you know, e each missing juvenile case is unique in and of itself. Um, I can tell you that, you know, there was a lot of work done on this one because of some of those circumstances that, that came up right away. And, you know, that's kind of why it was, it was sent out at the time that it was. If we had 60, we have 63 missing juveniles right now, can we send out alerts on all 63 of them? No, right? What are you guys going to do if you're getting, you know, two alerts a day on these. Nobody's going to pay attention to them. So another delicate balancing act is trying to siphon through the runaways, if you will, and, and the true kids that are endangered or, or were taken, you know, um, not on their own fruition. No, honestly, that, that, that's, that was complete garbage. Unfortunately, yes, you have scammers out there to try to take advantage of, of people in vulnerable positions, so that's not uncommon. Um, you know, the reason I'm, you know, we're somewhat guarded with the information, again, is there's information that only the killer is aware of. And, you know, as soon as we share that information with everybody, that's no longer uh, a card that we have in our pocket that we can play, you know, when the time is appropriate. So it, it's tough, and it, it, it sucks because I know people want to know as much information as they can. And believe me, we want to provide as much information as we can. Uh, but we have to, you know, walk the tightrope. Yes, the family's been, been very cooperative with us. Obviously, you know, they're devastated by this, as, as all of us would be, and all of us are, quite frankly. Uh, yes, the family has been very cooperative with us, and, and, and that's been great. And, you know, the guys are working their, their tails off to, on this one 
because she's 16 years old. It's a tragedy. You know, whatever, and I know there was other information that was already out there that she was on probation and this and that. That's all fine and dandy, but it's still a 16-year-old girl who was murdered, and, and that's not acceptable. And there will be a time and a place to evaluate everything that occurred in Jakara's life and how this maybe could have been prevented. This is not the time or the place. But that is a conversation that needs to take place and hard truths need to be answered. And uncomfortable questions need to be asked and uncomfortable answers need to be given. This is just not the, the time or the place yet. Our focus needs to be on finding out who did this to this poor 16-year-old girl. The cause of death, I'm not gonna, I'm not telling you at this point. Um, and she's been there for it, it, you know, at least a month to two months. I'm not gonna, we have a good idea, but I can't share that with you right now. Would it have made a difference to your investigation if she had been reported missing at this time? You know, I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, again, we have 63 missing kids right now. And, you know, especially we have a lot of those kids have other issues that they're dealing with. And, you know, it was not, no, I don't think that it would have helped us. You changed it all with 63, you know, with 63 missing kids. Mm -hmm. Many of their families might do this story and think the worst. Um, has RPD changed its policy on when you do put alerts out or don't put alerts out, or how, is it a case by case basis? It's a case by case basis, it really is. And, and what I, you know, I feel for the 63 families that have kids that are missing right now, okay? But let's take a step back for a second. What can we do to prevent them to go missing? Those are the questions that need to be answered, okay? Right now, it's a little too late in, in this particular case. What can we, as a community, what can we do as a system to prevent these kids from going off and doing what they're doing? That's where our attention needs to be focused at this point in time. Again, those are details that I'm going to hold tight to the vest. I'm sorry. So the requirements for an AMBER alert are very specific, okay? You, uh, you have to have reasonable cause to believe that an abduction occurred. Reasonable co cause means that you actually have an eyewitness. If you don't have an eyewitness that an abduction actually occurred, what you need to do is you need to eliminate all the other factors that could be behind that child disappearing. So if you have, you know, a, a, a juvenile who's been arrested in six stolen cars and you have a juvenile that's been you know reported missing six times in the last couple years there's a lot of things that you have to exclude before you meet the requirements to send out an amber alert does that answer the question oblivious to it yes mm-hmm Yes. So how do you strike that balance of So yeah, that's that's a difficult question and that's a, a you know, I can't answer that in a thirty second sound bite. It's it's a you will oftentimes see us sending out missing person bulletins for, for kids. Um, so we do the best that we can to balance it. Is, is sex trafficking sex trafficking of, of minors a problem? A of course it is, absolutely it is. Again, and, and I don't wanna jinx us and knock on wood, but we have been fortunate in, in this community up to this point where we haven't been um, faced with somebody who's been abducted and sex trafficked and found murdered. So we have to evaluate each case on its merits and, and it's a lot of work and you know, I think most times we get it right, and, and hopefully we continue to get it right. Again, I think where our efforts need to focus is what can we do to prevent kids from getting into a position where they're being sex trafficked, where they're vulnerable. Because the kids that are going into uh, 
that are getting sex trafficked, they're vulnerable for a reason, right? So what can we do as a community? What can we do as parents? What can we do as a system to prevent that from happening? I, I think that's where we need to focus. Uh, office, we, there was multiple different areas that we were searching, and we've actually utilized uh, drones and um, other means to search areas prior to her being found. As far as to where, not going to get it.